We just had a major announcement for Halo Infinite and its competitive side of gaming and why it's so important for the HCS to thrive for the success of Halo Infinite. Want to know more? Well, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. So we just received a pretty large announcement about the competitive side of the scene when it comes to Halo Infinite. And guys, this is a really big improvement. We got a nice big blog update from Tashi and the boys over at HCS giving us some information about who's joining the competitive side of Halo, as well as the benefits of being in these partner teams and how it will affect the in-game content and things involved with Halo Infinite day one. So guys, if you like these kind of news and informational videos, please make sure to tap that like button. It really does help out the video and channel. If you want to stay updated with everything going on with Halo as a wrap up to the release of Halo Infinite, well, make sure you tap subscribe. So let's get right into the content here. So yesterday we received the announcement of nine major organizations jumping into Halo. Some of them for their first time and some of them are returning favorites as well. Of course, there are going to be multiple teams going to be able to join in with the fun of competitive side of Halo. But these are the nine partnered teams with Halo Infinite. Well, so what does it mean to actually be partnered? Well, a previous development update from Tashi goes into this as well. What it means for a team to be in a partnership program. Well, we'll start out each partner team has designed their own in-game content which would be sold in-game on day one of Halo Infinite's release with more drops releasing over time. Of course these teams will receive a significant portion of the revenue from each sale. Additionally we're looking to enable teams to create as much content as possible to drive interest with the league. Now this line here actually kind of sparks some interest for me because obviously if you're making content you got help promote your brand as well. Uh, this also kind of comes in line with what we've seen previously with other organizations where they might actually bring in some content creators to kind of just promote the brand as well. So this might not just be just to these professional teams, even though they will be releasing content on their own side of things, but I think we might see some content creators, some of your favorite Halo content creators get involved with this as well, maybe partnering up with some of these organizations to help kind of promote the brand and some things like that. This happened previously with Halo 5 where some people joining like Straight Ripping, Cloud9 and things like that had their own kind of organizations bringing in on content creators. It's more just kind of like streaming personalities, bringing in your like Halo celebrities kind of in a way with the brand as well to kind of get the name out there because HCS and competitive gaming is rather niche compared to the larger gaming market. Because I remember I was a total casual playing Halo back then, but then what, right around like 2009 is when I first got introduced to like MLG gaming and I was absolutely captured it afterwards. And ever since then, I've loved competitive Halo. It's my favorite competitive game to watch and I cannot wait to see what comes from HCS. But these teams also get some perks as well for being a partner team investing in the Halo saying each partner team roster and coach will also get their travel covered for every event they're eligible for even if they start in the open bracket it's super important because these organizations have always kind of struggled within Halo there's been a lot of turnaround where previously Halo was focused on supporting players but now we're really focused on supporting organizations partner teams will also have the opportunity to include their own sponsors which that's absolutely huge helps pay the bills so essentially what Tashi and the group at HCS are trying to do is promote a healthy environment for these organizations to thrive within Halo competitive because honestly guys we're kind of coming from the ground up again when it comes to the Halo community at large so Halo kind of has to offer more than what maybe other organizations are doing or just as much if not even better just to kind of get teams involved with Halo to make them happy about joining in with the Halo community and also to have them thrive within this as well because HCS is going to be a huge driver when it comes to like marketing, when it comes to showcasing brands, when it comes to just putting out the word of Halo Infinite as well. So I'm seriously feeling like a like a Halo re renaissance here happening with Halo Infinite and I'm very excited about that. So that's all great and all what partner teams get and why they're there, but who are these teams and why they're going to be so important and what teams you should be looking out for? Because some of these teams actually don't even have rosters yet, which is quite surprising, but I'm sure some things are kind of lined up in the background. As you can kind of see, here's a nice little lineup of what we have right now at the moment. We have Cloud9 returning, which has been there since Halo 5. And Cloud9 is one of the biggest gaming organizations out there. Seeing them come back to Halo 
is going to be fantastic. With the roster of Penguin, Eco, Stellar, and Renegade, essentially the Splice team that won the 2018 World Finals, especially, but just missing out with Chauncey getting replaced with Penguin, who's a solid player as well. Definitely a team to keep an eye out for. Next, you have E United, which is a brand I actually haven't heard of yet, but yeah, they kind of have their hands in a little bit of everything. They have a solid roster of Rain, Ryan Noob, Spartan, and Nick as well. This is King Nick, not Uber Nick, if you guys are kind of curious. <laughs> we have FaZe Clan coming in to Halo Infinite Esports, which is super exciting. They just won the Call of Duty League World Championship, so they are coming off a hot win right there, jumping right into Halo. And the funny thing here, they mentioned it here saying, actually, we're just hoping they can help us find out where Campy is. If you guys remember Campy, one of the big name streamers, Back during Halo 5, you just kind of stopped streaming one day and uh, kind of bounced. But having FaZe Clan involved with Halo, guys, that is massive. We have Fnatic jumping in here. G2 Esports. We have Navi, which if I remember correctly, they were involved with Counter-Strike. I might be wrong on that side. I really only kept my eye on Halo Esports, but I definitely heard this brand before. I mean, they've won multiple titles across multiple games over the years. And so this is very exciting to see such a large brand come involved with Halo Infinite. The now household name of Sentinels, which have happened to grab Snakebite, Royal 2, Frosty, and Lethal. These guys are probably one of the greatest teams to ever jump into Halo. We're right up there with the likes of like Instinct, Final Boss. This would be the team you need to keep an eye out for when it comes to competitive Halo. Space Station Gaming, the return of Team Envy to competitive Halo, bringing in Pistola, Trippy, APG, and Lucid. But one thing you probably noticed from a lot of these names is that this big emphasis on like American and European teams, but not much in the way of like Australia or Latin America, which also have significant Halo communities. Uh, they do mention within this blog update that they do recognize that there is a strong communities there. Uh, they just want to make sure that they kind of get their core markets that are available first and just kind of scale out properly. And they see if there are opportunities in like Latin America, like Mexico or Brazil specifically, which kind of have larger communities for the Halo side of things over in Australia, New Zealand as well, that they would certainly be open to those ideas and having teams being jumped in here as well. But I guess, uh, you know, 343 does kind of have a history of maybe buying enough more than they can chew and so they wanted to make sure that these teams that they bring in for the partner program is something they can easily manage but then can also branch out over time you know essentially you don't want to just add in everybody they possibly can and be overwhelmed with all these tasks and things because like i said they're like helping support these teams with obviously content within the game that you can purchase which will help support these teams as well as also supporting these teams with like flights and things like that which can be incredibly expensive very quick now obviously we don't know exactly what kind of deal these teams struck with halo how invested they really are with the franchise but it seems like these teams are just gonna be like yes we want to have a halo team we're gonna be in it for the long haul and it sounds like what hcs team over at 343 they must must have provided a pretty sweet deal and a really good opportunity for these teams to jump in because it's not cheap to organize these teams together so these nine partner teams are getting some sweet perks. Are they gonna like gonna be guaranteed with these events? Are they gonna see them every single time? Well, they're gonna at least compete in these events. But the great thing about HCS is that it's an open bracket format. As in these teams are not guaranteed points. They're not guaranteed to be in the finals or anything like that. I mean, these teams probably will get some bonuses that will be like, hey, jumping in with more invitational events. Like we saw for the South by Southwest event in Austin a few years back and actually talking with Tashi myself Himself, he's talked about like how people enjoyed that event so much that they're definitely gonna want to try to replicate that that's what these teams will probably come in for those kind of invitational events but if you're a team starting out from nothing you can compete in halo you can go against these large teams and actually make a name for yourself as well it's not like the call of duty league where you have these established organizations and teams that you have to join if you want to take a part of the call of duty league we're in the halo side of things anybody can play it's an open bracket if you can play the best you can possibly play and it's good enough against these high quality teams then you'll do just fine but seeing these large organizations jumping into halo really helps legitimize the competitive scene for halo infinite which does also make me think about like how much money is going to be involved with these prize pools right to get these big orgs jumping into halo infinite we probably have some pretty large prize pools probably million plus matches i mean that's what we have for halo 5 in 2018 for the world 
finals with like a million dollar prize pool we could see like million two million dollar prize pools now so if these teams think they can get some legitimate money out of halo they definitely would join in and it seems like they're doing just that essentially it's super exciting to see these teams jump in evolved with halo infinite before the release of the game i'm guessing they probably had some chance to look at it play around with it and they probably something saw something really promising to where they felt the need to invest in halo so if you're new to the channel or missing any content from me recently check out this playlist right here i got a playlist for all my halo news and informational videos thank you so much for watching i greatly appreciate it i'll catch you on the next one peace out